Yo, what's up? This is Sasha from Fall of Carthage, and I just wanted to let you know that we decided to give a little background information on each and every song on our new album, Ammo Green. This means that you will get at least one clip each and every day from now on, and yeah, I hope you like it. If you have any more questions, please let us know. Peace out. Go! Signs of Corruption, as the title reveals, it deals with uh, bullshit politics and fake news. And uh, we decided this song to be the opener of uh, the whole album, so uh, my intention was to write a fast song, a faster song, and to be really straight into your face. And uh, to be honest, I was kind of inspired by bands that are very pure a very pure into your face sound like uh, Ray Swiss for example um, and that was yeah that was uh, my direction I just wanted to go with the songwriting on that song and for me it's it's a perfect open opener you know no intro not at all just uh, here we are and this is our face we hope you like it next one on the album is priceless uh, one of my favorite songs on the record and this song is sort of like a sequel to Suffer the Pain from our second album. It's one of the songs where we decided to change some parts in the studio, um, especially uh, the vocals and the chorus, because the idea I recorded in the, uh, for the demo was just too weak for this powerful and aggressive song. So when we heard it in the studio, we were like, oh no. And so I had to come up with a new idea. And luckily, it came very quickly. The same lyrics, just a totally different approach um, that fits way better than the first idea from the demo. In the intro of the song now, you can hear a small part of the old idea because um, we wanted to keep it just for fun. Superior is about critics and other people that are trying to sell their opinion as the only one on the planet, the only real one. People that obviously take time to uh, write re reviews or copy them <laughs> and judge other people's work without spending time with the, with the product they judge, the product itself. People that cannot deal with the fact that there is life outside their typical borders and stereotypes. People that want to tell others what to like and what to uh, ignore. People that expect just another copy of songs and bands that are copies themselves, copied a million times before. You don't fit in, they don't like you, and that's okay. But why not say, it's not my thing, pass the CD over to someone else saying, hey, you might like it, I don't know. I had to learn to take, not to take these things too personal and not to take them too serious. And this song is part of the process. Down There was intended to be something like Tapeworms 2. Tapeworms is a track on our previous album. But you know, by the time I wrote the lyrics, I had to deal with a couple of memories and I wanted to like retain them. There's not much text in the song, but um, you know, the meaning is very important for me. And there's also a connection to Emma Green, which comes next on the album, the title song. The title track, Emma Green, um, is for me something like, you know, I did on uh, Signs of Corruption. So very, very straight riffing, no melodies at all, because, you know, this uh, the lyrics deal um, with uh, child abuse. So it's a very serious, serious topic. And um, I, again, I was kind of inspired by bands like Raised Fist. Which, which was the same thing on uh, Signs of Corruption. But this time I just wanted to keep also the song structure very clear, very simple, and just uh, didn't want any melodies, any harmonies, nothing, you know, just pure riffing, um, just to give um, Sasha's voice much more room to express, you know, the lyrics and his feelings uh, on that song. And in my opinion, it worked very, very well. And this is one of my favorite tracks on this album as well. Cheers. Emma Green addresses the topic of child abuse, rape and murder, like Arcadius mentioned before. And even though it's not in any way related to an actual case or person, it's still a thing that happens. It's not fiction. And it might be unbelievable, but 
crimes like this don't just happen far away, they happen right next door. Emma Green is somehow a tribute to those kids and their loved ones. It's also a call to keep an eye open and be sensitive um, about such things. We later decided to use the name as the album title as well um, because it's very untypical for a metal record but still easy to remember and with the pictures I already had in mind for the cover and the booklet it somehow felt complete. Song number six is Lies in the Cup which is basically about politics and um, the federal election here in Germany in 2017. It was remarkable and quite shocking to see what and how certain parties were trying to make us believe and how people reacted. Such hatred and ignorance, xenophobia that reminded me of um, the Nazi times, the horrible Nazi times. And so there was this growing anger inside me and that picture of poison someone is dripping inside your drink to make you follow. Belongings, one of the songs about money and the struggle to earn enough to make a living. Well, some of you might know the feeling too well when you um, feel ripped off by the state, taxes, tax consultants, and everyone is just taking, taking, taking huge amounts of your earnings. And no matter, no matter how much you work your ass off, it's never enough. Well, you know, here's a saying in, in uh, Cologne that says, "It hat noch immer jammer," meaning um, it, it's gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be fine. So let's just hope so. Talking about fake is government. I mean, uh, I knew immediately right from the beginning the riffing has to be very heavy, and uh, I didn't want to make it a uh, very fast song because you know I just wanted to capture uh, the emotion um, you know we had writing the song. So, in my opinion, a mid-tempo, hard, heavy riffing would be perfect. So, I remember back in the days when I was writing for the latest Sweet Aqua album, Rams of Fedori, I had an idea which um, didn't really fit to the Sweet Aqua sound, but I captured it with my mobile phone in the rehearsal room. So, uh, right before I started to writing uh, Fakers Government, I talked to Sasha to reset it to me because I couldn't find this idea on my hard disk, hard disk anymore. And, um, he said it to me and uh, I listened to it again and for me it was the perfect match for this song. And this is basically the main riff of the song. And that's it. F O God, which reads fuck off if you want to. Um, it's short for fake ass government. Well, Trump was becoming um, president of the United States by the time we did the songwriting for this album. And also, right-wing parties like the AFD were gaining a lot of attention here in Germany, um, which was very frightening and still is. And I thought it was about time to make a clear statement against racism worldwide and not just shake my head. So, fuck Trump, fuck the AFD, fuck the old right, and fuck every motherfucking Nazi in the whole fucking world. Fuck you. Um, the riffing for the song Dollar Hungry, you know. Um, actually, to be honest, I was at the show here in Germany just to watch Ignite from California. It was the first time I saw them live and uh, it really inspired me because um, I thought the kind of, you know, punky feeling hardcore, um, which isn't that, that much brutal riffing at all, but it still kicks ass. So I thought, it might be very cool to try something like this out. And this is what I basically did on um, on uh, the song Dollar Hungry. I just uh, used some you know kind of kind of punky feelings thing and you know combine it with uh, some heavy riffing, uh, which is uh, the part where Zasha sings Dollar Hungry, uh, you know, the chorus. So um, it was something new for me, and I like the result. Slow and low. We always wanted to do a cover version of the Beastie Boys because we all love Beastie Boys and we grew up with that sound. And what we knew is uh, that we, we ain't gonna make um, a cover version of one of their hits like, you know, um, Sweet to Brooklyn or um, whatever. And uh, I, I don't remember who came up with the idea to do a cover version of uh, Slow and Low. But we love that song and uh, 
we just uh, change it a little bit. It's not as long as the BC Boys version and the middle part um, was a spontaneous idea to create, uh, to write this part, which is really heavy. So uh, yeah, this is what we basically changed, but we just wanted to capture the spirit. And uh, yeah, that's how we want to honor Beastie Boys and uh, bands like Run DMC, you know, who just uh, originally wrote that song. Strong as enough.